See, we're all made up of cells, plants and animals. And if you're going to break open the cell wall of a plant, you can do it by two different means, mechanical and chemical. How do you break open the cell wall of a plant mechanically? Is you chew it. You chew the cut, right? Or you chew your salad. Uh, you chew the kale, the broccoli, the cauliflower. You can mash it up with your teeth. But after that, after that mashing up with your teeth, there is no chemical aspect of your digestive tract that can break open the cell wall of a plant. I was just asked the other day by someone new to us if I was the Forbidden Doctor. Well, of course I said no. The Forbidden Doctor is not me at all. We are not the Forbidden Doctor. Jack is not the Forbidden Doctor. It's in you. The Forbidden Doctor is that magical, mystical power inside of you that is controlling and healing you. It's everything. that beautiful, marvelous, almost miraculous force that controls all healing. It's that innate intelligence, that life force directed influence that triggered your DNA to guide the building of your body after conception. Yeah, it's that power that sustains your life, repairs your wounds and lesions, and it never stops working. It's that essential part of you that keeps you alive and heals your every hurt. This is the Forbidden Doctor. It's not me. It's that part of you. The powers that be have decreed forbidden to ever learn about or even consider and never ever rely upon for it is forbidden that you even know this life force exists at all you are your own forbidden doctor yes hey everybody it's dr jack and mary and welcome to the forbidden doctor podcast this is podcast episode 182, The Forbidden Carnivore Diet, How Dr. Josh Lost 100 Pounds. Wow. We'd like to introduce you to our new sponsor to The Forbidden Doctor podcast, Cashback World. This sponsor doesn't just help keep our podcast on the air, but it helps you, the listeners. This free app gives you cashback in your pocket when you shop. And we all have to shop. That's all we have to do is shop. It's so fun. So mm -hmm. why not use this app and get cash back? Yes. Wow. Do you like that sentence? That's good. Why not use this app and get cash back? Go to whynotgetcashback.com to register and download the free cash back app. Now, we've been doing a series of interviews with mentors and colleagues over the last few podcasts mm -hmm. concerning what we consider to be the forbidden knowledge of self-healing and recovery. Yeah. So we were going to interview our son, Dr. Joshua Stockwell, who's also a NUCA doctor, but he filled in for a talk radio host at the same station where I broadcast from, and we decided to use his show in place of a direct one-on-one -on -one interview. Yeah, his show um, has been edited, but it's filled with great information, such as how he lost 100 pounds yes. with this forbidden diet he's going to talk about. And it is forbidden. It, it's really controversial. Totally. You'll love this podcast. So without further ado, here is our son, Dr. Joshua Stockwell. Well, welcome to K-Talk Radio. This is Dr. Joshua Stockwell. I was here producing for my father's radio show. And once it came time for the other show to pick up, I was in my truck and I was listening to the radio and there was dead air. So I thought, you know what? Why not fill that dead air with some talk? So I'm here to talk. Uh, I do not know what the call-in number is. I'm sure a lot of you do. But um, a lot has happened in the last year. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I am a Nuka chiropractor like my father before me. <laughs> like Luke Skywalker talking about Anakin. Um, we have a lot of fun in the office. We run a chiropractic office in South Jordan and have, he has for the last 20 plus years. And I've been a chiropractor now for since 2008. And um, having a really good time at it. I've been able to learn by my father's side. And um, I haven't always represented a a picture of health to my patients and 
a um, a crisis point last year. August 28th is a day I started a change in my life. I had had a an eye stroke recently, which is where a tiny little blood vessel in the back of your eye and your retina has had enough of the high blood pressure and the malnutrition, and it goes pop, and it resulted in a permanent change to my vision in a very, very small way, but one that's always recognizable to me. And if you're on the phone, give me just a second to tell the story and I'll get right with you. But um, I was very sick. I was 380 pounds. I had been even heavier than that a couple years before. Really, really high blood pressure, um, very obese. And I was in the office taking care of my people and helping them be healthier when myself, I was getting sicker and sicker. And I tried so many things to heal myself, to lose weight, to get back to a very good picture of health. Anyway, um, as I got sicker and sicker and my liver was malfunctioning for reasons that I won't get into details on the radio about because it's just TMI too much information. There's some uh, things that I won't talk about, but I will tell you that I was a very sick individual and on the verge of a very, very big crisis because I had that change in my visual field in my left eye, right in the center. It looks as though I, I looked at a light bulb for a good solid 15 seconds. And then when you look away from a light that you've been staring at and blink, you can see the shadow of that light, you know, the kind of shadow well, that's in my left eye now all the time. So <laughs> that's a really big motivator when your vision starts to go. And uh, anyway, I made a big change. I talked to my brother. My brother told me, Christian, that he had been following the advice and the words of Jordan Peterson from Canada, who is a conservative kind of philosopher figure who's a professor at the University of Toronto, I believe. And uh, he had talked about switching to an all meat diet where he only eats salt and beef and water. And I know that sounds very radical to a lot of you, but uh, it sounded radical to me at the time. I was I was like, are you kidding? Like, I don't want to die. I don't want meat rotting in my gut. I don't want to ruin my digestion more than it's been ruined the last 30 years. And he said, you know what, Josh, it's not going to kill you. Him and his daughter, Dr. Peterson and his daughter, Michaela, have been doing this and have cured themselves of a lot of maladies, including anxiety and depression and rheumatoid arthritis. These two individuals, the Petersons, did not go on an all meat diet, which I will call carnivore from here on. They didn't do that to uh, lose weight. They did it to bring proper function back to their bodies. And it's very possible to do that when you have the proper fuel in the human digestive tract. I didn't know that at the time. I was very adverse to it, but I tried it. And I started eating only animal products. And the turnaround that I had in my health initially had nothing to do with losing weight, despite the fact that I was very obese. I had a change in irritability levels and mood in, that my kids noticed. And despite their initial opposing reaction to me doing something so radical, because I had done stuff like this before that was very radical. Trying over and over several different fad things, crazy things in order to bring myself back to health. Get me off the addiction that I had to carbohydrates and sugar. So they were initially very opposed. And then... And then after two weeks of doing this, they saw such a change in me that they started to do it too. And they saw a lot of changes. I want to get a little more into that and talk a little bit more about what we do in the office, but I'm going to attempt to take some calls here. Um, let's see if I can do that. Uh, caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Hi. Hi. Good morning. I just wanted to let you know you are coming over the air. Thank you. So we can hear you. And the call number is 801 254-1640. Well, thank you so, so much. What's your name? It's Delane. Delane, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. 
an interesting show. It sounds, being a person who doesn't eat meat myself, this is really an interesting concept. Yes. But, and I, and so I, I would propose, is it the meat itself? Is it the dead carcass that is making you well? Or is it the vitamins and nutrients that the animal was eating that, that is in the animal's body? So is it maybe their diet that we should go towards? Just a thought. That, I will hang up and listen to you. Okay, go right ahead. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. So I want to answer Delane's question. Um let me paint a picture for you. Um, the digestive tract of different mammals varies a lot from one mammal to the next. And the digestive tract will tell you very clearly what the appropriate food type for that mammal is. And I'll just bring in, I'll talk about cows. I want to talk about gorillas too, because, you know, we're. Through history and media, we are very strongly associated with gorillas. We have, you know, fingers and thumbs, opposable or not. We have, you know, these similar body types, but our digestive tracts are extremely different. The cecum in the large intestine, which is the first part of the large intestine after the small intestine, the cecum in a gorilla is incredibly large compared to that of the human being. And the purpose of a cecum is to ferment foods and and plants in uh, specifically need to be fermented. You don't have to ferment meat. Meat will just putrefy. Putrefaction is the main mode of digestion in the human digestive tract, but in the simian, in the ape, it's fermentation in that cecum of the plant material. And why does fermentation of plant material have to happen in order for you to get the nutrients out of it? How does a cow get the nutrients from grass? And it's very, very uh, simple once you look at the building blocks of plants versus meat, what the cell wall is made of, what is required to break open a cell wall. See, we're all made up of cells, plants and animals. And if you're going to break open the cell wall of a plant, you can do it by two different means, mechanical and chemical. How do you break open the cell wall of a plant mechanically? Is you chew it. You chew the cud, right? Or you chew your salad. Uh, you chew the kale, the broccoli, the cauliflower. You can mash it up with your teeth. But after that, after that mashing up with your teeth, there is no chemical aspect of your digestive tract that can break open the cell wall of a plant. You can use a blender, and you can break open all those cells. That's probably the best way to break open the cell wall of a plant. And the reason why I'm talking about cells, the very, very tiny makeup of the, of the material that you're eating, is because the nutrients that you are looking for to nourish you lie within the cell. So you have to be able to break it open. If you're a, if you're a, th a bank thief, a bank robber, and you go to the bank... You have to be able to open up the safe in order to get the money out. And if you don't have any tools to open up that safe, you're not going to leave with much money. So it is with food. If you can't break open the cell, then you can't get the nutrients out of it. So we can talk about the amount of nutrients versus meat and plants. And when I say plants, I mean leaf, stem, bark, seed, fruit, everything about that plant. It uses cellulose for a cell wall. So whether you're eating grains or whether you're eating leaves like kale or whether you're eating a flower like broccoli, no matter what part of the plant you're eating, you have to be able to break it open. So whether you're going to have to cook that food to mush in order for the human digestive tract to even have a chance to break open that cellulose cell wall. Cellulose is what the cell wall of a plant is made of. And you do not, as a human being, make cellulase, which would be the enzyme that would be able to destroy that product. Cellulose is fiber. And it, fiber is completely indigestible to the human being. There are bacteria in your gut that, can, that have cellulase that can break that open, but not in the populations and not with enough time with which food passes through the human digestive tract. Now, here's where it differs from an ape is that those, that plant material will sit in that large cecum aspect of the colon and ferment until it breaks open. 
And then the ape will be able to get the nutrients that were inside the cells of that plant. But the human being can't do that. And if you look, this is, Delane, this is how I'm going to answer your question, is that the cow will eat the grass. It will eat it all day long. It's going to do mechanical digestion by chewing the cud. It's going to do chemical digestion because it's got four chambers in its stomach. And they're called rumens. That's why a cow is a ruminant. There are other ruminant animals who have multiple chambers in their stomach. And the, the point of these chambers is to allow a place for a certain microbiome to attack the cellulose and break it open. So the cow will several times bring up the cud and chew it again. A cow is chewing all day long in order to get the nutrients out of that grass. And then the grass that's been chewed up and mushed up will sit in those four different chambers, one after another, a different microbiome in one chamber to the next as this food moves through and gets digested. And it takes an extremely long time. The speed at which food passes through the human digestive tract does not leave enough time for that kind of fermentation to occur. So if you want to get the maximum amount of life and energy from the sun that's in that grass, you have to eat the animal that ate the grass. And this is what's so powerful about this message is that the human digestive tract can digest protein and fat like a hot knife through butter by mechanical means or chemical means alone. You could swallow an entire piece of meat and digest a lot of it without chewing it because of these chemicals and these processes that exist within the human digestive tract. So I want you to, for a moment, suspend all of the societal and mainstream media information that you have concerning what's healthy and what's not. You have to dismiss the current model of what foods are correct and healthy for the human being. And in that suspension of those beliefs, you can start to look factually at the parts of the human digestive tract and what they're capable of. It's as if we're looking into a car to see whether or not it's a diesel engine or a gasoline engine. Because if it's a diesel engine, you don't want to put unleaded gasoline in it. It's not going to run. If it's an unleaded gasoline engine, that's what you want to put in it to get the maximum functionality from the car. So our bodies have multiple parts that require fuel of a certain kind. And that can be attained through meat alone without any necessity from plants. Um, it's, it's the mainstream idea right now that that is a very unhealthy way to eat, but that's the way that media and those people who control those streams of education and information, that's the way they want you to believe. So you'll see it everywhere. You know, how, how healthy veganism is or how you, but you've got to eat your salad. You've got to eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables. I mean, how many times have we heard that? It, from how many different streams as a human being? We've got a break coming up. I'll get more into that, and I'll give you some resources so that you can look into these things yourselves. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. This is Dr. Josh Stockwell. We're talking about carnivore diet and chiropractic this morning. Um, the carnivore diet is a diet where you eat only animal products. It's a very radical idea to a lot of people out there and sounds maybe unhealthy. But in the next 20 minutes, I hope to break it down to you to show you how incredibly healthy it can be to eat the most nutritional source for human beings on the planet. Um, let's see if I can do this right here. Go ahead, Brother Tim. Are you on there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, an interesting show. It's yeah, uh, kind of weird, isn't it? It's really weird. To, uh, not to challenge you, but to understand how do we prevent from getting scurvy if we're not eating, uh, you know, citrus or whatever. That's a very good question. The the question, brother Tim here has: um, What about scurvy and the vitamins that you get from citrus? Let me put it this way: If you're eating carbohydrates. As a main source of fuel for your body, your, ne your necessity for vitamin C in order to handle and process all those carbohydrates is extremely high. It was very well known amongst the captains of the ships back in that day. If they had meat on the boat, they needed no limes. 
which is really interesting. It was when there was a lack of animals to eat that you needed to have those limes to keep people from getting scurvy. Um, I have been eating exclusively animal products, like 99% animal products for the last year without a single sign of any vitamin deficiencies at all. In fact, I'm demonstrating a level of health that I've never known in my life. 30 years of digestive issues are completely gone. And I wish I would have known about this a lot sooner. But yeah, the, the, the thing with vitamin C is that you're going to get some of that through your diet. Yet, um, your, your need for it is extremely low when you're eating an all-meat diet. Does that make sense? Uh, it doesn't make sense according to what I've learned. <laughs> oh, believe me. Believe me, brother. Uh, you know, going through eight years of, of uh, schooling to become a healthcare practitioner, which included anatomy and physiology and, and nutrition courses, I mean, medical school level anatomy and physiology, I completely missed anything about what I'm talking to you about now. And, and uh, the, any current uh, modern education concerning diet and nutrition and health in human beings is far, far off the mark. And there's a really good reason for that. It wasn't by accident. So the, everything that we've learned, what, think of the source of where you learned it from. If you learned it from, you know, uh, any, any major media source, it's going to be way off the mark and it's going to steer you to buy grains. In fact, the, you remember the pyramid back in the day, grains right. down at the bottom of the pyramid was the majority of what you should be eating in your diet, right? Right. Grains are extremely lacking in the appropriate fuel for the human body. Extremely. Not only that, but it'll irritate your gut with the lectins that, and the zonulins that push open the little tiny spaces where nutrients enter your body through your intestines. They get forced open. You've heard of leaky gut and undigested material going into the bloodstream and creating horrible allergies and other issues in the body. Grains are wonderful for when there's no animals around and you can eat them temporarily until you find another animal, but by no means should that be something that you eat on a daily basis. Especially the grains that we have here. I mean, they're horrid. But uh, anyway, the, the, if you go to any dietitian or nutritionist and tell them that you're going to eat an all-meat diet, they're going to look at you like, they're cra like you're crazy. But if you go part by part in the human digestive tract over and over again, there's huge amounts of evidence that the main source of fuel for the human body is animal flesh and fat in almost a 50, 50 relationship, half fat, half lean. And, and you'd be even healthier if you could go beyond that and have even more fat than you do lean. Be, but not, but not because of anybody's opinion, brother Tim, this is, this isn't about a doctor's idea about what's healthy for you. This is about what the human digestive tract has the capacity to break down. And, and it does have an incredible capacity to do that. And when you look at that food source and that you have the ability to digest it, you also know that pound for pound, fat and meat have huge amounts more nutrients in them than plants do. And they're available to you because you can break them down. A plant cell wall you cannot break open. They you Very interesting. What about uh, poultry and fish? Does it meat include anything from a living critter? Yes, yes. Because the cell wall of the tissue that you're consuming is made of phospholipids. It's fat. The cell wall is made of fat and collagen. Now, here's what's interesting is when you eat food, your stomach releases pepsin onto the food. This is the biggest sign after the mouth of digestion is the stomach. But the biggest sign that the stomach gives you is that pepsin is released. But what does pep pepsin break down? So I don't know. Collagen. It breaks down collagen, which is a main connective tissue in animal tissue, animal flesh. So if you have the ability to break down collagen then it only makes perfect sense that that is something that you should be consuming because you can break it down. 
And once you leave the stomach and go into the small intestine, your pancreas releases a host of protein and fat digestive enzymes. And I could go down the list of names, you know, trypsin, chemotrypsin, pancreatin, protease, lipase. There's a little bit of amylase in there, but very, very, very tiny amounts. And that's what digests carbohydrates. But the main function of the pancreas is not insulin in your bloodstream. It's the exocrine part of the pancreas. See, the pancreas works inside the body and it works outside the body, which means it, it produces something that gets eliminated. But it also produces something that goes into your bloodstream. So the, the exocrine aspect of the pancreas, which is the digestive part of it, it secretes these powerful digestive juices that digest almost exclusively protein and fat. So there's another sign. The human being, in order to get the nutrients that it needs, needs to be eating protein and fat because of your ability to turn it to complete mush on a chemical basis alone. You go to the gallbladder right after the pancreas and the gallbladder squirts bile onto the food. What's in the bile? It's salts. It's bile salts. And these things exclusively digest fats. So there's another sign that you should be eating fats. There isn't a mechanism chemically in your digestive tract that can do a single thing to a plant. So when you eat them, your digestion of that material stops at your mouth because you can chew it up, but that's where it ends. So if you see anybody who's been a vegan for long enough, you're going to see somebody who's severely malnourished and emaciated without the proper hormones in their blood. Yeah, my body's always told me that I need uh, protein. Meats and uh, beans. Yeah, beans. Yeah, I don't beans, feel good if I... See, beans are the Go babies ahead. of the plant. The beans are what create more plants. And in anything that's alive, there is this intelligence inside of it, of life, that seeks to protect and survive and thrive and reproduce. So in that intelligence, the plants have anti-nutrients around its seeds. So beans have a lot of phytic acid and lectins in them that will irritate your colon so much that you will be in, un, incapable of bringing in the nutrients from that seed and so that you don't eat it. That's the plant's protection mechanism. So I appreciate you bringing up beans because the, unless you cook them in an air fryer and destroy those in, flam, or, uh, in, a, in a pressure cooker, unless you cook them in a pressure cooker, you're not going to be able to... Um, destroy the bad parts of it. That's that's the reason why you skin a tomato and and remove the seeds and only eat the flesh of the tomato because the skin and the seeds have these protective anti nutrients in them. Anyway, I digress. Very interesting. Uh, uh, I used to have hypoglycemia, where if I ate you know carbohydrates, I could eat a little, especially with protein, but uh, my body would overreact and, you know, the pancreas would send out too much insulin and drop my blood sugar. And yeah. my pancreas is now worn out and I have type 2 diabetes now. You, can, let me tell you this. There are doctors in the UK and Canada, specifically Dr. Unwin and Dr. I can't remember his name. He's in Canada. Anyway, these two guys are reversing type 2 diabetes on a daily basis in thousands of cases. Reversing it. Bringing the body back to proper function. With, and, and these patients, even the ones that are so far gone, you know, in, they're in their 70s, they've had diabetes for years, are able to, if not reverse it, reduce their necessity of, of insulin by huge amounts. And it, it involves you turning the body back to burning fat as a fuel source rather than sugar. Give me just a second. I got to put you on hold. Okay. Hey, Dr. Josh, we want to interrupt for just a second to bring up the free symptom survey that we offer on our homepage at ForbiddenDoctor.com. Yeah, it's the best survey on the Internet anywhere, and it has tons of questions, and it gives us a comprehensive overview of your health so we can recommend a personalized protocol. 
which saves you money in the long run because you are not buying supplements you don't need. Yeah, and after you're done, you have the opportunity to have a free 30-minute phone consultation. And, of course, you'll be given your personalized protocol even if you don't want the phone consultation. Now, guys, nobody else in the world offers this. Nobody. Nobody offers free personalized protocols. And I have to tell you, we spend almost all day on two personalized protocols today. So these are not just brushed off with some computer program. This is really serious what we do for you. And then we offer a free 30-minute phone call with a nutritionist if you're interested, but you still get your your protocol. And this at no cost to you. All right. So let's get back with Dr. Josh. You there? Yes, I'm here. I really appreciate you calling. Did you have any other questions or comments? Uh, I'd like to find out how to cure my type 2 diabetes. Okay. <laughs> All right. But uh, Well, let me you give know. you a website, okay? Okay. What website is that? Justmeat.co. J-U-S-T-M-E-A-T dot C-O. That's where you Okay, start. I'll check it out. And you can go to meatheals.com and read about these people reversing their type 2 diabetes. Now, that being said... I also want to stress that you go to ForbiddenDoctor.com. Uh, Mary and Jack have put together a pancreas protocol that if you were to supplement with that, uh, it would only quicken the process and help your pancreas out to return to normal function. Uh, I'll check it out. Definitely. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for calling in. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's your name? Are you still there? Hello, yeah. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Jason, and I have two questions for you. One, yep. okay, so this is an all-meat diet. My wife's convinced me, uh, based on your prompting, actually, to go on the meat, all-meat diet. We're going to do it for two weeks. My yeah, big okay. concern... Uh, my big concern is, is I, there are people, and I'm reading a lot of reports, <clears throat> that um, your body ceases to be able to handle carbohydrates and then once you're on it after a certain period of time there's absolutely no way whether it be a plant-based carbohydrate or a simple carbohydrate through bread or what have you and that all of a sudden it's going to throw your uh, entire track into disarray okay okay that's the first thing okay and the second thing is is on um that microbiome what i found interesting is when i've modified my diet and removed all carbohydrates the sugar cravings are intense when i heard a new study that said that uh the microbiome actually affects the vagus nerve i've wondered now were those cravings from my body or were those cravings that were sent signal sent off by the microbiome that actually feeds off of those carbohydrates You know, your microbiome in your gut is something that adapts to what you're eating. So if you eat a diet heavy in carbohydrates, you're going to have a microbiome that feeds off those things. But if you have a diet that is only animal products, then that's going to drastically change your microbiome. That's true. But let me let me illustrate something for you. I've been eating almost only meat for an entire year. And we were up at Bear Lake for Labor Day weekend, and I went to Crepes and Coffee. It's it's our favorite place to go, my family and I, when we go up there. And when I went up there, I ate a raspberry crepe that's full of whipped cream, and it's wrapped in a big old crepe, and it's got a bunch of raspberries. And I hadn't had a raspberry in a year. And it, and it was loaded with sugar. And we went back to the campsite after we had eaten that, and I just sat back in the camping chair and on this huge sugar buzz. Like, it was insane. And I'd forgotten what that felt like. You know, when you were a kid, you used to feel like that if you ate like a pack of Skittles or something. So um, I I wasn't sick. Uh, I was able to move right through it. I didn't have any issues. It was just fine. Okay. So I, I think it's a myth. I think that in any time when you don't have animals, that's what's so great about the human digestive tract is that you can adapt. Oh my gosh, the end of the show's here already. It is. Um, All right. Yeah. Well, God bless. Hey, I, we will talk later. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Justmeat.co okay. will tell you how to do it. You guys have a great day. Thanks for listening. Yep. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are still listening in, it, I don't know how to get the other show on here. So I figure I'd just continue. 
Um, we were talking about, um, this is Dr. Josh Stockwell, by the way, we were talking about a, a radical change in the way that we eat and why it's not unhealthy like it's being painted to be. Um, I was just talking to a gentleman off the air about um, digestive issues and and how you can help them by putting the proper fuel into the human body. I talked last hour about the makeup of the human digestive tract, the organs that are involved in digestion, and what they target specifically in the human body. So I'm not talking about, a, you know, what's your blood type. I'm not talking about, um, you know, somehow plants having everything the human body needs. Because they don't. You can't get everything you need from plants but you can get every single vitamin, mineral, nutrient, fat, protein, everything necessary for human optimum function is in meats. You've heard of essential carbohydrates? No. Have you heard of essential amino acids? Well, of course. Essential fatty acids, EFAs. Essential means that you cannot make them yourself. You have to get them from your diet. In order for your body to function well, you have to get these things from your diet. Essential fatty acids are fats. Essential amino acids are proteins. You need fats and proteins for your body to function appropriately. And the only way you're going to be able to digest those is if they come from an animal. That's what your digestive tract suggests. So digestive issues. Do, if you have IBS or Crohn's, if you have... Um, you know, diverticulitis, constipation, diarrhea, uh, excessive gas, reflux, burping. If you have all of these signs that there's something going on wrong in your digestive tract, there's a simple fix is that you eat the fuel that your body has the capacity to burn and burn well. And when it burns it, it brings all the nutrients and essential pieces that are necessary for your body to function correctly. 30 years of digestive issues, folks. 30 years. I was 12, 11 or 12 years old when I remember having some really hard trouble that I had for 30 years straight till I was 42, 43 years old. Here I am at 44 with absolutely no digestive issues. It took a long time for my guts to heal, but I did it by eating only meat. It's called the carnivore diet. And it's absolutely fantastic. It's not just for digestive issues. If you want your hormones to be on par, if you want to be able to think clearly and to get out of anxiety and depression, did you know anxiety and depression could be caused by what you're eating? Dr. Georgia Ede, E-D-E, -E, Dr. Georgia Ede. Look her up and see her videos on how, and she's a psychiatrist and she talks to you about how plants produce mental illness in human beings. On a scientific level, she doesn't have anything to sell you. I mean, unless you want to consult with her. But she offers this information for free. Like, here, figure it out, folks. There's an epidemic right now of mental illness in the United States. Antidepressants are huge here. And how much of that, how much of antidepressants are being prescribed because people are eating the improper fuel for the di human digestive tract. Michaela Peterson out of Canada, she's her father's manager, Jordan Peterson, this professor from the University of Toronto. She had rheumatoid arthritis from the time she was two. When she was 17, she had had a hip replacement, a hip replacement and an ankle replacement. And now is in perfect health. She suffered from extreme anxiety and depression. And she heard about eating only meat and she started trying it and eventually she got to the point where she only ate beef salt and water because that's the only way she could eat and feel alive and not have anxiety and depression and it cured her of it and in her videos online she talks specifically about why she continues to eat the way she does is because she never wants to feel that depression and anxiety again horrible horrible life-altering depression was turned completely around by putting the correct fuel in the body. In order, for you, in order for you to feel like the world is a good place, to be happy and feel joy and bliss, you have to have hormones that supply those kinds of feelings like oxy oxytocin, serotonin, 
and I could go on and on. There's so many hormones that are meant to help you feel like life is worth living. And you can only build those if you have a well-functioning digestive tract and the proper nutrients to build them. All of these hormones are, are built from the ground up by fats. You have to eat fat, animal fat, in order to be able to produce the kind of hormones at the levels that are necessary for you to feel good in life. So she cured her depression. And she has a website and a blog and other things that are devoted to showing people that their mental illness may in fact be due to the way they're eating. Now, nothing I'm saying here today, let me give a disclaimer. Nothing I'm saying here today has been evaluated by the FDA or blah, 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 whatever. This is not, I am not offering you information in order to treat any disease. I'm offering you information to show you how the human body functions correctly. Uh, I, th there was a caller a while ago. I don't know if he's still on, but he asked me, well, so what do you eat in a day? And I said a pound and a half to two pounds of steak. There may be some cream in my coffee. Um, but that's the majority of what I've eaten in, over the last year. Do you know how many steaks that is? <laughs> and people ask me all the time, well, wouldn't you get sick of that, Dr. Josh? And I'll tell you the truth without any embellishment that when I sit down to a properly cooked and seasoned steak, I am just as excited to consume that thing as I am the steak that I ate seven months ago. There is no change in the draw to eating these foods. It's very strange. I was a carb addict for 40 years. I remember being five years old and looking for all the change that I could in the house. We lived on 1600 North in Orem. And I would find as much change as I could, and I would take it to Vern's Market on the east side of uh, State Street, just before 1600 North. And they had these racks of candy that are the, you know, they're the, the junkie makers. They make junkies out of our kids. If you go into a gas station, you look at the lower levels where the kids have a good perspective, and it's all candy down there. That's not by accident. They sell candy to kids to get them addicted to sugar, and then they've got you. You'll want sugar in everything. And when any diet apart from a high sugar diet is, is even offered as, as an option to these people, they, it's not even a, a conscious thought that drives them to not accept it. They will defend their way of eating to the death because of their addiction, without even knowing that that's what they're doing. Talk about crazy making. Anyway, I would take loads of candy home, as much candy as I get, even if it was just 10 cents to buy one fake lipstick that I didn't buy for beauty at all or for <laughs> makeup reasons. That lipstick was pure sugar. Candy cigarettes, Laffy Taffy, Spree, sweet tarts, Skittles. I was a sugar addict from before my mind was done, you know, forming itself and my habits. The only way I was ever able to get off of carbohydrates was to eat meat and fat in large amount. And that's what took away my cravings eventually. My cravings were pretty strong when I started the carnivore diet, but very quickly they were gone. And now, I did have the raspberry crepe up there at Bear Lake, but even now I don't have the cravings to have that sugar anymore. And I feel like I'm out of prison, like I have a new lease on life. Um, my heart works better, my brain works better, I sleep better. I've lost 90 pounds in the last year. 90 pounds, and I haven't exercised a single day. I'm just putting the proper fuel into my body that's necessary for it to function correctly. It's amazing to me how well the human body functions on eating only meat with everything that I've ever heard about health. Anyway... So yeah, I eat mostly steak. I eat chicken, 
not very often. I eat pork, I eat fish, I eat eggs, I eat cheese, but none of them in the proportions that I eat steak and fatty steak, a big fatty ribeye steak. And if you go to Costco, you can get them for nine forty nine a pound, I think. You can get a New York steak sometimes for seven ninety nine a pound. The New York steak is proliferated with marbling and fat. It has a big, thick piece of fat down one side. And that fat mixed with the lean meat is what offers you the kind of nutrition that is appropriate for the human body, believe it or not. A lot of people are now healing themselves this way. And if you go to meatheals.com, meatheals.com you can see thousands of testimonials of people who were incredibly ill that have healed themselves just with food alone so now that I've talked about that I want to talk more uh, take this opportunity to talk a little bit more about what we do in the office I'm a chiropractor like my father um, we do a technique that involves aligning the spine using the first bone in the neck. It's very gentle. There's no twisting, popping, or cracking. It requires much less care on a less frequent basis in order to attain incredible results in the way you function and feel. All individuals respond individually to the care. It may be that you only need three or four adjustments to get to the point where you're stable in an aligned position in your spine so that it can function correctly and give you the relief of your neck pain, your back pain, your arms going numb, the headaches, the migraines, the myriad of reasons why people come in to see us. Once parents get what we're doing and they feel the healing and proper function, they bring in their kids to make sure their kids get aligned and grow with their spine in an aligned position. If you can get a kid to grow up with a spine in an aligned position, You've got a human being that's going to avoid a plethora of structural issues that happen when your spine is misaligned. So we're misalignment doctors, spine doctors. We take very specific x-rays in each individual case to see exactly how your spine is misaligned, how to approach the reset in the balancing mechanisms in your body to cause it to hold itself in a more aligned position. Um, to give you an idea of the kind of reactions and responses that people get when we do the work that we do, uh, I'll just read a few testimonials here. I don't, I don't mean to toot my own horn so much as to show you how these people are having their lives changed by just a very gentle adjustment a few times on the side of their neck. Dr. Josh Stockwell is very knowledgeable He's helped my back and neck pain. The receptionists are always helpful and courteous. We could not run our office without the powerhouse front desk that we have. We have Jen at the front desk, who is my wife. We have Stacy. We have Carrie. And now we have Dakota. Um, she's brand new. Welcome to the team, Dakota. Uh, Carrie is extremely experienced and knowledgeable about supplements so we have a nutritionist on staff and great help i wanted to mention them and thank them for all the hard work that they do we couldn't take care of people the way we do without them we're gonna go to break i'll be right back welcome back to the show ladies and gentlemen talking about a lot of different things this morning uh one of them is i was just talking about chiropractic and how we do chiropractic in the office at dr stockwell and associates my father dr jack and myself have been have combined well over 30 years of experience in taking care of people's spines and i was just going through some testimonials and one of them talked about the staff and how wonderful our staff is to deal with um, thank you, Jen, Stacy, Carrie, and Dakota for the hard work that you guys do. Here's one for Dr. Jack. I've been going to Dr. Jack since 1993. I can't say enough words to praise him or anyone 
who has worked in the office. Jack and Mary went above and beyond and came by the hospital with my last incident. I love, love, love them. Here's another one. Dr. Josh is the sweetest, kindest, and funniest doctor I've ever known. Oh, thank you, Shawnee. I've been told multiple times I needed neck surgery. Or doctors have tried to force prescription drugs on me. I was in constant pain but refused to take any medication. My coworker told me about Dr. Josh, so I decided to give him a shot. I've been almost pain-free ever since. By almost, I mean when I am not rear-ended or trip on something and throw my atlas out again. <laughs> I would highly recommend Dr. Josh. People are able to get over some really intense pain situations by having their spines cared for. Always amazing results from Dr. Jack's expert touch. That was Barbara. Kendra said, I would never go anywhere else. Josh is excellent and attuned to personality needs. I always look forward to an adjustment. We always try to meet people where they're at. And to create a very comfortable atmosphere with which we can take care of you. Dr. Jack and his son, Dr. Josh, both are great chiropractors. Both of them have a great knowledge and ability to get a sick person well or to get a person who is in pain feeling well again. Both doctors really care about and love their patients. Thank Dr. Jack. Thanks, Dr. Jack and Dr. Josh for your consistent excellence and loving care. Their staff and all are excellent and always very, very kind and helpful. So we work really hard on a daily basis to create an environment where people can come in um, to the office and find answers to their chronic pain and their health problems. So if a consult, if you'd like to have a consultation at the office with either Dr. Jack or myself or with Carrie, who is our nutritionist and is qualified beyond anyone who's ever worked in that office to do that, except for Mary, she may even meet Mary's standard, but, um, If you would like to have a consultation with any one of us, the consultations are free with Dr. Jack and myself. And you can schedule that by calling 801-523-1890. If you would like to talk with Carrie, you can call and schedule with her at the same number, 801-523-1890. I, as an, as, because it's the place where I work, I get to talk to Carrie all the time about... Uh, nutrition. I'm very lucky that I'm able to do so because she's a wealth of knowledge. Um, tell you, I just wanted to tell you one instance so you can understand what kind of changes are possible for you even when you're at the end of your rope. I had a patient come in who had been in a car accident long before and eventually she needed surgery and she had her fifth, sixth, and seventh cervical bone fused together, after which she was never out of pain. And she had gone from pain doctor to pain doctor to orthopedist to find out how to get herself out of the neck pain and headaches that she was constantly in. And she had spent tens of thousands of dollars in doing so. Rhizotomies, where they burn the outside lining of the nerve. Shots. Drugs. Everything she tried to get out of this pain and nothing could touch it. Uh, her pain doctor, who is an, an acquaintance of mine, said, you know what, I think you could benefit a lot from seeing this doctor. And she showed up in my office and we took x-rays to figure out exactly how her bones are shaped and how her head is being carried by her neck, in her case specifically. And we gave her an adjustment to cause an optimization of that. Very, very gentle adjustment after the analyzation of the x-rays. When she came back for her first follow-up visit, there had been immense changes already. And now I see her on an every two-week basis in order to keep her in alignment, but that's just where she is in her care. She will eventually get to the point where she can hold the proper position in her neck and spine for months at a time, but it has almost completely removed her symptoms when she's in alignment. Now, this is a really, really powerful testimonial from someone who for more than a year had tried everything to get out of chronic neck pain. And with a gentle adjustment to the side of her neck, she was able, her body changed the way the stresses were being dealt with in the spine. And she was able to live 
in an almost completely normal existence when before she was racked with pain every day. I love those kinds of stories. And you know what, folks? We get them all the time. That's what makes it so wonderful to go into the office. We can go in there and, and just turn people around that are apparently to other modes of healthcare, medicine in particular. They, they are a lost cause or a candidate for another surgery. There are other ways of getting the body to heal, and it's my pleasure to talk about them on the radio. The other way to get the body to heal is to eat the proper foods. Um, what? Who has the authority to tell you what the proper diet is? I'll tell you who doesn't have the proper authority to tell you what the proper, proper diet for human beings is. Is a multinational billion dollar corporation that profits from selling seed oils and seeds to humans as if that's the proper food for them. They do not have that authority. Yet there was a study done in The Lancet, one of the oldest and most prestigious peer-reviewed journals in the medical field, The Lancet, and it came out with the EAT study, capital E-A-T, and it proposes to tell human beings what the proper diet is for them over the next 200 years. Now, who funded the EAT study in The Lancet? It's a very important question to ask. <laughs> it was funded by Kellogg's. Now, what is Kellogg selling? They're selling seed oils and seeds mashed up and dried and tossed with sugar and thrown into a plastic bag and offered to you like a dog of Alpo, a bag of Alpo to a dog. Here's your human dog food. It is what is appropriate for you for the next 200 years, and that's going to cement us into the corporate super world. Thank you, human beings, for eating our crap and buying it and actually thinking that it's healthy for you. If we take the media and what it has to say about what is a healthy breakfast, you would be eating nothing but sugar and crap. Sugar-coated and sugar-filled cereals filled with grains that are going to irritate your gut. Milk that's full of sugar. Orange juice sitting next to it. Huge sugar dose. And then toast on top of it because there's not enough crap in that breakfast yet. You see what the media has to tell you about what's good for you? Part of this nutritious breakfast? That is the biggest lie nutritionally perpetrated on human beings. The other one is veganism. And if you're a vegan, please, don't take that as a personal hit. But look into what I'm about to offer you in information. Don't turn the radio off. Please, I want you to hear what there is to know about the human digestive tract and what's appropriate for it. And plants are, of, are so inferior in food source that the only time you should be eating them, in, according to the human digestive tract, is when you need medicine or when you don't have any animals to eat. The human digestive tract is almost totally carnivorous and suggests eating a carnivore diet filled with with meats and fats, and sometimes organ meats. It's a shock to a lot of you, I'm sure, out there to hear something like that. But it's not any huge corporation that is putting a big million-dollar commercial on air over and over for, to brainwash you into buying their crap. Well, the information that I have to offer you is, is factual anatomy of the human body and what it's capable of digesting. This Lancet study that came out was not only funded by Kellogg's, but Unilever, which is Europe's version of Kellogg's. They want to take industrial seed oils like canola oil and soybean oil, which are incredibly cheap to produce, that require immense amounts of chemical intervention to, to even make 
consumable to you. And it's not even consumable at that point. It just looks clear in the bottle and doesn't taste like absolute dog crap. They want to push these seed oils on you and their grains until you are so sick that you need medical care. They do not care about you. They don't care about your health. In fact, they'd like to keep you sick because then Johnson & Johnson is going to make that much more money selling you their drugs. You got to face it. We, the majority of us, are quote-unquote plebeians. It's a, it's a term I've been using recently. We are commoners. We are the plebes. And these corporations that are identities unto themselves are the super rich and the elite. And they will continue to empower themselves to be super rich and elite by selling you crap. How much does a box of cereal cost to make? Like, really? Grain is subsidized, right? Which means you're paying for it as a taxpayer. You're contributing to the production of grain, which then becomes a flattened, non-nutritious, non-digestible food product that will stave off the feeling of hunger in your gut because it fills your gut up with fiber and what else? Whatever else. Carbohydrates. Spikes your blood sugar. Causes irritation in your blood vessels and systemic chronic inflammation throughout your entire body. It causes blood sugar handling problems, metabolic issues that will eventually lead to heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, anxiety, depression. This is what they're selling you as appropriate food. This is an atrocity. And the information to educate human beings on how to eat appropriately needs to be spread. That's partly why I'm on the air this morning. This is not my radio show. But I wanted to share this information with you. That you can return to proper health and function in your body. There's, there's a testimonial that was given concerning this on uh, Twitter the other day. That I copied down and I'd like to read it to you. Let me see if I can find it here really quick. Sean Baker is someone that you can follow on Twitter and Instagram. Dr. Sean Baker. that will talk to you a lot about the dangers of a plant food diet and the benefits of an all-meat diet. In fact, he eats only steak and has for the last two years and has zero calcification in his arteries and power lifts and, uh, and is a world record holder in rowing, I believe, or some kind of record holder in it. This is from a man named Grant Schrammick. He said, I am a 74-year-old man. It's never too late, folks. Thanks, Dr. Sean. You and Dr. Ken Berry are, prov are proving to me that it's never too late to become a carnivore. And wow, what an improvement in my life. Thanks again. I was a type 2 diabetic taking approximately 90 to 100 units of insulin per day. I now take nothing as far as medication is concerned. My medication is now 99% meat and fish. My only cheat is two to three cups of coffee and some monk fruit sweetener. That's a nice cheat to have as a carnivore, the monk fruit sweetener, erythritol sweetener. They're plant-based sweeteners that don't have uh, an insulin blood sugar effect on your body so there are cheats it's not like you're never going to have anything sweet again you can do that and have a very joyful life but some people want to have that sweet and it's available to you if you want to do that so it's never too late folks give me just a sec sorry about that I had to cough I don't have any water with me here. I wasn't prepared. But I'll tell you. One other. Uh, testimonial, excuse me. It was my sister, Susie. Who in the past. Has thought several times about ending her life. Because of how she feels. 
The depression is so thick with her that she has at one time contemplated suicide. I'm going to tell you my sister's story when I come back. But I'll tell you now, she's a very healthy, mentally healthy individual. I'll tell you how she did it when we come back. Welcome back to the show. This is Dr. Josh Stockwell. How you doing this morning, everybody? Um, there was dead air after my father's show on the radio, so I turned the truck around and came back to the studio and jumped on air with the chance that I'm not going to make anybody too upset and to share the message of health and healing that comes with eating an all-meat diet. Very radical idea to a lot of you, I'm sure. But one that needs to be heard and spread and proliferated if we are ever going to return our nation to a state of health and proper function. I was watching a video on, I think it was Netflix, it was about Woodstock. And it was a documentary on Woodstock. And it shows all these people back in the late 1960s walking around, hundreds of thousands of them. And there's tons of videos of all the people who were there. There was not a single obese person. Of all these teenagers and young adults and all the other people who went to Woodstock, with all the video footage they have, I did not see one single obese person. What has changed? What in the last almost 60 years, 50 years for sure, has changed? <clears throat> I was obese. I was at one point over 400 pounds. Uh, recently, last year in August, I was 380. I've lost 90 pounds since then, eating almost an exclusive meat and animal product diet. I feel better than I have, I think, than I have the majority of my life. Uh, my frequency of headaches has dropped severely. Uh, I fit into clothes that I haven't been able to fit in since before my marriage 23 years ago. And it's been a year since I've been eating almost an exclusive animal product diet. Mostly steak. Because it worked so well for me after my brother introduced it to me, I started to research it and I found that it's not only weight loss or digestive health that is fixed by eating a diet like this, it's mental health. Dr. Georgia Ead. Dr. Georgia Ead, E-D-E is her last name. And she's a psychiatrist and she talks about the mechanisms of mental health that are affected by eating plants or eating meat. So, eating meat will give you the basic building blocks that are necessary for you to have the hormones to feel good in your brain. When I read these things and understood more about the specifics behind them, which I don't have to get into, but I thought of my sister who had recently been going through a very intense bout of depression and had years ago tried to kill herself. It was saved by my sister Mary, thank God. But she was in a point where every time she would wake up, she'd be sad when she woke up, incredibly, incredibly depressed upon waking and I had read and uh, watched Michaela Peterson's videos, read her material about her return to mental health and a freedom from anxiety and depression. So I offered that information to my sister in the hopes that she would listen to Michaela talk about eating only meat because there's a big influence that Susie has in her life up in Canada that would suggest that she needs to eat a lot of plants. <laughs> so I offered her something that was very contrary to anything she'd ever heard. And she was skeptical, but she heard Michaela's story. And it moved her. And she decided, well, if this girl freed herself from years of extreme anxiety and depression, then I'm going to give it a try. And now... She's more than 40 pounds down. She's lost the weight doing it. She's eating an almost exclusively animal product diet. 
and she wakes up in the morning with zest for life and her depression is gone. She has bad days just like anybody else and has stress just like anybody else. And situations that she'll find herself in that she wished she weren't in. But that's not her choice to make. It's not our choice to make in some of the situations we find ourselves in. What's important is what we do in those situations. And if you are well nourished in your brain, your capacity to make appropriate choices and decisions and to feel good about life is very, very enhanced. Now, I'm not suggesting that depression be treated <coughs> medically by anything that I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that people return to proper function in their body by putting the proper food, foods in their mouth. What makes meat the proper food and fuel for the human body? Isn't it supposed to rot in your gut and cause cancer? Aren't there studies that, that link red meat intake to bowel cancer? That's something you need to look into when you hear. Because the anatomy of the human body suggests that you should be eating red meat on a very, very large basis. So why would a study suggest that doing so would cause cancer? Well, they don't tell you about all the crap those people are eating in addition to the meat. If you are going to eat meat and fat in the, in the quantities that I am suggesting, then you do not eat carbohydrates with it. If you are going to eat plants of any nature, be it seed, stem, bark, leaf, or anything else, you eat it by itself. You don't eat it with meat. Your body has an incredible capacity to bring meat down to its cellular level and beyond by chemical basis alone. The chemicals that are in the human digestive tract digest meat like acid digests anything. <clears throat> like a hot knife through butter, the chemicals that your body uses to digest digest meat so well that you can get all the nutrients that are in that meat. And pound for pound, it's the most nutritious food source for human beings on the planet. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name? Uh, it's Zane. Zane, hello. How's it going? Hey, I like what you're saying. I kind of wanted to add a few things because... Go right ahead. I used to be a, a competitive teenage bodybuilder. A natural one, but I've never never taken any no juice. steroids or any time. No juice for me, man. I couldn't <laughs> right. afford it. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Go ahead. I'm too north for that. Anyway, um, you know, when people compete in sporting uh, events of any type, especially when they do it for the first time, they really accelerate their knowledge of what they're doing. You know, they, their skills, their knowledge and ability just uh, compounds almost. And, you know, maybe it's the effort, maybe it's uh, the people involved, I'm not sure. But, you know, the most successful dieters, in my opinion, are, are bodybuilders. And, and the reason they're successful is because they have discipline. Um, and they educate themselves on nutrition. You know, so maybe I'm um, encouraging folks to compete in a bodybuilding competition, maybe not even enter, but just try and prepare for one. I, I, I think the knowledge that they would gain is... Uh, it's just amazing. In the short amount of time, how much knowledge and how much you'll understand your body. Because, you know, your body's trying to tell you things, too. And if you don't know how to listen or if you don't care, you're not going to hear what your body has to say. And you could be harming it and doing the opposite thing. So a lot of the foods that you eat will tell you how they react with your body shortly after you eat them. And if you consistently eat them and they don't react well, then maybe it's something you want to stay away from. But as far as the meat goes, you know, meat and fat, it's, it's been a critical part of our diet for maybe tens of thousands of years or more. I've never heard of a vegan tribe surviving and, and making no. it out of the other end. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, there are some culture, tribes but, and peoples in the world that have very high carbohydrate diets, but it's not this processed stuff that we're doing here. So, yeah, I totally yeah, understand and what you mean. It, it takes a long time to learn properly how to be a vegan or a vegetarian. And it's saddening when, you know, vegan parents or vegetarian parents force their kids onto that kind of a diet because they truly don't know what they're doing long term. And oh. they, they probably truly don't know what they're doing to their own bodies. 
But, uh, you know, education is key in every facet of our life, but especially um, in, in diet or, you know, in, in what we eat. That's what I call a diet is, is it encompasses what we eat, not the quantity of what we eat. But uh, something that's yeah, very man, important I, I, about what you said is that the, it, it, when you are at that level of performance, you really have to listen to your body. And it's so much more important to listen to your body than to listen to modern misinformation that's offered. This is what's so dangerous about quote unquote education concerning what to eat is that there is tons of information out there that appears to be valid that would tell you to eat plants for health. So even if you have the best intentions of living the best and healthy life, if you follow what is misinformation out there clothed as education, you're going to make yourself sicker. Yeah, for sure. Like unbelievably sick, maybe to the point where you won't recover. Well, listen, you know, there's, yeah, go ahead. There's a lot to be said for, for our, how we coordinate our meals too. In America, I think we have it all backwards. You know, breakfast is breaking the fast overnight. So if you don't eat a breakfast, you're just continuing the fast and which, you're affecting your metabolism. Which is so, you a know, wonderful like thing to do. Yeah, I, and, I, and I think breakfast should be the biggest meal and dinner should be the smallest. You know, so breakfast uh, like a king, lunch like a pauper, and, or uh, lunch like a prince and dinner like a pauper. I don't know if you've heard that saying before. I, I have. I have, Zane. And, and, if and, there, you, and there's a lot of truth to that. You mentioned the 300,000 or so years that human beings have been eating meat and fat as a primary caloric intake. You, you've got to understand that in those periods of time, people didn't have set times for anything. You if you ate in a day, you had a good day, and you could go another couple days before you ate again. But certainly, the times when they ate was when they killed the animal. If you had an animal there and you killed it, you'd eat it. There was no storage of the meat unless you were making pemmican, right? Yes, sushi so, all the time, right? Exactly. You, you kill the animal and the whole tribe eats, and then you go out and find another animal. And then you'll eat when you kill again. So... So the body, the human body is already adapted to have these long periods of time without eating at all. And if you are fat adapted, if you are in the state of ketosis, you're going to be using your own fat for energy. But if you're eating carbohydrates, you're going to get really hungry, really stinking quick. But, but to have that rest, and fat. <laughs> yes, yes, because your body's like, oh my God, we're starving to death. But, but. If, if you go that period of time, that long period of time, if you can extend the amount of time in between your meals, it's being called intermittent fasting. It's getting more popular out there. But if you can do that, your blood vessels get a rest. Your digestive system gets a rest. And there's a lot of healing that happens in those times when you're not eating. So, yeah, fasting, even on a daily basis to go 16 to eight hours, 18 hours without food, if you can get to that point, is extremely beneficial when you're trying to bring the body back to proper health. Well, and, and look at, uh, you know, the morbidly obese that have dieted. You know, they, they get whiplash because they start to stop their diet so fast that the metabolism speeds up and slows down. That's my I mean, story. You, you know, and I don't want to use a terrible example, but if you look at, you know, something like the Holocaust where they're worked constantly and not fed, you're going to lose a tremendous amount of, of weight to the yes. point of being unhealthy. Yeah, And then if you eat a lot and do nothing, you're going to gain a lot of weight to the point of unhealthy. So, you know, being being literally worked to death and being sedentary, there has to be a, a middle ground. And in, in, in competitive bodybuilding, one of the best ways to lose fat is to do the aerobic bike, you know, for 30 to 60 minutes. And it's not it's not even considered aerobic exercise. You can't have a conversation while you ride the bike you're doing too much. The whole goal is just to increase your metabolism. Like you're basically... I. I I, I would compare it to uh, running hot water on a on a pan of butter. You know, if the pan's cold, it's, the butter's just going to stay there. But if you heat it up, it slowly starts to melt. And uh, by just heating up your body for a consistent amount of time, you know, from the 85 to 95 uh, uh, RPM range, you know, you don't want to go, you don't want to be climbing hills. You just literally want your legs to be revolving. We are running out of time, Zane. <clears throat> thanks but for hey, your input, hey, sir. I appreciate your show. Hey, Educate thanks for listening. On nutrition. Thanks for calling in, man. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, he was mentioning uh, bodybuilding and uh, performance athletes. I want, you, I, wanna, I want you to understand that when you start to remove meat and fat from your diet, from an animal source, you lose your ability to perform. Novak Djokovic, world champ over and over, one of the best tennis players in the world 
is now retired because he hurt his shoulder. And guess what he eats, folks? Look up Novak Djokovic to check it out. Out for the rest of his life because of his injured shoulder. And what's his main diet? Speaks a lot. Starts with a V. It's been great. Okay, well, that was a great show with Josh. We really, uh, we really enjoyed that. He works with Mary and I in the clinic. He's a fabulous doctor, great for patients of his own. And he's a funny, funny guy. Yeah, he is. He really of, enjoyed he, him. He missed his calling as a stand-up yeah, comedian. He's so so good. anyway, many of you may be finding us for the first time. Keep in mind the protocols on our website, ForbiddenDoctor.com, and what has been talked about are only available to logged-in users. But you can create an account instantly by taking our free, no-obligation symptom survey. So don't forget to tell your family and friends to take our free symptom survey at ForbiddenDoctor.com. The statements made in this podcast about specific products have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging or this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other health care professionals. So thank you for listening to Dr. Josh and this forbidden information in our forbidden podcast. Yeah, join us next time for another in-depth discussion of forbidden knowledge, and we will see you then. We will see you then.